Hello YouTube and welcome into another part zero video for our summer, now fall, now winter, A&W Challenge. I'm the Game Mechanic here with you as always and today I'm talking about Tamar, poor, lowly, Tamar. <laughs> 36 out of 36 for me, the worst Civ in Civilization 6 for my money. Um, she is a downloadable uh, DLC Rise and Fall leader um, with some cool concepts but some very, very poor execution. So let's get through it. Um, starting with Glory of the World, Kingdom, and Faith. Um, this is kind of a, a, a stacked ability as far as what they're trying to do, uh, but functionally while playing, uh, particularly on Deity, uh, it, it you don't get a lot of use out of it. 100% um, Faith, so double your Faith for 10 turns after declaring a Protectorate War. Um, that's, again, something that we've talked about before. These these, these specific Cassius Belly uh, type wars are, are, are difficult to... Um, declare. I'm not saying they never happen, but uh, you can go through a whole game without ever having the opportunity. Um, and so just the fact that, hey, there's a really strong ability that you might never get to use. Um, that's not pretty good. That's not, that's not good for, for my dollar. Uh, I, I just, I'm not that interested in abilities like that. Like that feels probably really good as long as you've got a bunch of faith generation going already. Um, and, and, and then you're like, oh, this is great. Uh, but it's just not, it's not reliable enough. Um, to 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 warrant a high rating for me i guess um each envoy you send to a city state of your majority religion counts as two now that's interesting that is interesting um particularly with the city state wall mod that we run uh if, if you're not running that this is also probably useless uh because the city states are just going to get bowled over in the fir first 50 turns or so um but so if you have a majority religion and you're sending envoy you can just it's like free envoys uh that's that's excellent um, that, that, that's actually quite cute. Um, having, having a couple suzerains, especially if they are, uh, religious city states, um, it, kind of depending on, uh, there are a bunch that are quite good. Kumasi, for example, stands out as something that might be really, really good. Um, that, that, that's actually useful and, and can be fairly reliable. Um, now sending, sending envoys to city states that you've just met that are halfway across the world, you're probably never going to get anything out of that. But, uh, keeping the first few that you meet that are near your empire, uh, as your ally, pretty, pretty pretty good not bad not bad so kind of a hedge on that one um it would be if it would be decent if the top half were more reliable um cool idea uh bad execution strength in unity uh make when making dedications uh at the beginning of a golden age or heroic age receive the normal age bonus to improving era score as well so that's really really good um so let's say uh let's say say we take exodus of the evangelist we got a golden age uh you also get the uh extra era score for converting cities as you do that so um, that's actually a pretty strong ability, uh, and it helps you chain Golden Ages. Once you have your Golden Ages going, the fact that you get a, uh, an era score booster along with the, the primary, uh, like the benefit, um, is, is really actually quite good. Um, I, I like this ability. I, I like it more since I originally played, um, but it's fairly strong. It maybe needs to come up a tiny bit in my rankings. I don't remember what I did recently with him. Um, but this is a, it's, it's, a, it's a decent ability um, and, and kind of fun, cool, cool conceptual ability. Um, I can see that, especially with like, you know, just religion synergies, envoy synergies, things like that uh, happening. I, I kind of like it. Um, Tshiki, on the other hand, is I don't give out a lot of zeros. This is one of them for sure. Uh, so this is a building unique to Georgia. Lower production cost than normal Renaissance walls. That's right, folks. Renaissance walls. This is unique Renaissance walls. Um, and are that that's something that that is so obscure and so buried uh, way too deep in a bunch of stuff that I don't want to build. It's it's almost laughable. Uh, it's almost like a troll like a troll ability. Um, but let's finish it off here. So raise the strength of your outer defenses in that city to the highest possible. Provides a little bit of tourism, okay, um, and provides faith. By the way, the wall like normal Renaissance walls also provide that tourism. So I, I'm not even sure if that's additional. I don't plan on ever finding out because I don't ever plan on building these walls, even for era score. Um, provides three faith. So you're telling me that I need to build ancient walls, medieval walls, and renaissance walls? I don't really want to build two out of the three of those. Ancient walls, sure, I'm interested. Um, but the rest of that is terrible. Terrible. There's so much production. The, the ancient walls are great because they're cheap uh, and they're an effective just kind of first line of defense against. You know, could be barbs. Could be you know the first couple turns of a war while you move your military up there. Strong walls, not something you want to be building at all. Uh, there, there's no way your economy is so good that your that your best defense is creating renaissance walls. Um, create units. Create other things. 
Um, th this is just a sub awful ability. I would rank it negatively uh, if 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 I could. Um, yeah, don't build them. It's not great. Uh, we we've I've talked on stream a, a few times about how I would fix things like this. I'm not going to get into that now. Um, but that's an unusable ability. So zero out of five for me. Boo. Um, and the Kevisher on, on is, is is also so this is a strong unit for like the AI uh, because they get a, a bajillion D production and stuff like that. Um, but for our purposes, the, this cannot be pre-built. It's it's where it's where your pikemen are. Um, so it's a dead end tech. Um, they get seven combat strength when fighting on a hill and no movement costs for moving into hill. So once you have the unit, it's 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 reasonably strong. Um, it, it fights fairly well, but your your route to getting them is bad uh and and you're probably not making a super effective war out of this um some people would argue for oh like use use the building that allows you to faith buy units first of all that doesn't time out particularly uh particularly ideally um but but second when you're when you're faith buying your units with that strategy you're best off faith buying swordsmen and then spending gold to upgrade them to musketmen, for example. And again, you cannot do that with Kevisher. Any of these units that you can't pre-build, I'm just not that interested in. Um, so, so it's a, it's, it's pretty bad. Like once you get a couple, yeah, it, it could be fairly strong. But you're, you're committing a whole lot of resources into doing it, uh, and I don't think that, uh, that, that plays well efficiency-wise. Um, the one thing about the Kevisher that, uh, that does, that does happen is it, it, it grants us a hill bias. Um, and so you get a point for that because I like hills. Starting in hilly terrain is quite good. Uh, but there you have it. So uh, some things that definitely need tweaking. Some cool ideas as far as a religious sieve, um, but just fairly poor execution. So poor Tamar uh, remains at the bottom of my rankings uh, for at least the time being. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoy uh, the Let's Play. Don't forget to stop by Twitch.tv slash Game Mechanic. Come say hi to us in person on the internet. Bye, everybody.